So this next comic coming up to the stage, he won his spot. He's gonna come up here and give you guys um, some some comedy. It's fresh. It's just, it's just brand new. Are you guys ready? And this guy was my number one pick. I thought he was the funniest dude. Ladies and gentlemen, give a lot of love, all right, for this next comedian, Mr. Aaron Harlan. Hey there, how y'all doing? That was Rodriguez, huh? Isn't he great? Isn't he great? I tell you, he's a good looking man. I'm, I'm, I'm not into that, but he's a good looking man. I'm kind of jealous. Because I'm not, you know. He's probably good in bed too. I don't, I'm not. How many of y'all are good in bed, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. When I was a teenager, I used to fall asleep on myself. <laughs> so you sit there. <laughs> my parents don't come home and catch me when I'm just sitting there. I used to be really heavy, I used to weigh 400 pounds. Yeah, you ladies want to know how I lost it? Yeah. Yeah, all the ladies are like, yeah! The guys are like, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> There's all you gotta do. Here's all you gotta do. We'll get real for you. All I have to do is convince the doctor that you have cancer. They'll give you some chemotherapy. Wait, come right off. <laughs> you also lose your hair and your ability to have children, but uh, you can fit into the skinny jeans. So that's good. And I know you think that's screwed up, but that chick back there is like, can I have a doctor's numbers? <laughs> my, uh, my mom's big. My mom's a big lady. When I was growing up, my mom's about uh, six feet tall, 300 pounds. And uh, after my dad died, she lost some weight. She's down to about 5'2". Uh, it's a good look for her. But uh, she's big and she's dangerous. She's big. One time she broke her arm, she had it in this cast, you know, one of those that holds it out like that. She's sleeping on the side of the bed, she'd roll over in the middle of the night. Punch my dad for right in the face. Monday night. Tuesday night. My dad finally figures it out, so he gets a piece of rope and he ties the cast to the bedside table. He thinks he's smart. My mom weighed 300 pounds. She rolls over. He wakes up just in time to see the bedside table coming. <laughs> she, fin she finally lost the arm. They had to amputate it. Uh, they replaced it with a Louisville slugger. <laughs> My dad moved into another bedroom. But on the good side, she's batting 320 for the Phillies. So it's, uh, it's good. And my mom bought me a Snuggie. You see these Snuggies? It's like a blanket with arms in it so you can read in bed. I don't even have to sell it either, you guys are just laughing. It's like a bathrobe for a dyslexic, right? I'm trying to figure out how someone figured they'd make money selling something to dyslexics that makes them able to read in bed. But, uh, but uh, I just figured this guy's a moron, woke up one morning, put his bathrobe on backwards, and said, oh crap, I'm gonna make a million dollars. He's gonna write a book. Step one, be a moron. Now they got them for dogs. They got Snuggies for dogs. So your dog could read in bed? What the hell is that? <laughs> my, uh, yeah, my mom's great. My mom's great. But uh, one of the things she can't do is she can't, she doesn't understand jokes. She doesn't get jokes. I mean, she gets them. She's not dumb or nothing. But uh, she can't tell jokes. She's terrible at them. She doesn't understand how it works. Like, you tell my mom, my mom will say, you know, you know why the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? You know, she'd be something like, you know, why the chicken want to get to the other side of the road? What? So I told my mom this joke. I said, I said, Mom, here, i got a joke for you. This guy goes to a bar, gets totally blasted. The bartender takes his keys away and sends him home in a taxi. The next day, he calls to get his keys back. Bartender says, how are you doing? He says, oh, man, I've never been so drunk in my life. And I fell out of the taxi. I couldn't figure out how to get into the, into the front door. I ended up sleeping in the doghouse and blowing chunks half the night. The guy says, I didn't mean to make him sick. The guy goes, no, man, chunks is my dog. So 
So I, I told that to my mom, the good, good Christian woman she is. <laughs> Six months later, she forgot where she heard it. She calls me up. She calls me, Aaron, I got this joke. I'm like, all right, mom, hit me. She goes, this guy goes into a bar and says, quick, give me a drink. I've been blowing my dog. <laughs> That's a good joke, mom. I might use that in my act. But um, when I was going through the cancer thing, I'm not lying about that. The doctor wanted me to give a sperm sample. So uh, I went in to give a sperm sample. I'll tell you right now. I have never looked forward to a doctor's appointment so much in my life. You know, because I got to go watch porn and the insurance company paid for it. <laughs> and I didn't have to return the DVDs. <laughs> you tell me, no, I'm just going to the doctor. You know, nothing, nothing screwy. He's like, I get to watch porn. So I, my wife was like, hey, you want me to come with you? And I said, why? She said, well, in case you have some trouble. You know, in the room there, you need a little help to get things going. I said, no, it's okay, honey, they got nurses. So I went in there. Unfortunately, I had, a, I had an HMO, right? Never get a sperm sample if you have an HMO. They have the worst porn in the world. I went in that room, and I was in there for hours. I couldn't get anything to work. It was like doing housework. Just like, oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and geez, I had significant chafing. It was bad. I came out and I gave, uh, I gave my sample to the, uh, I met the sperm guy, the sperm doctor, the andrologist. I, I brought out my sample to him and uh, he was the gayest person I ever met in my life. And just, it was amazing. He's like, hello! It's like, I'm going to be looking at your sperm. He says, I'm going to be looking at it for count and mobility and morphology and flavor. <laughs> I was like thinking to myself every time I'm looking at this guy, I'm thinking, yeah, it must be great to be able to change your hobby into a career, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> all right, everybody, well, you know, we're going to bring Alice back up here. Thank you very much. That's my time. You're, you've been great, all right? Keep it going for us.